first theocracy, study of God. God, God was the ruler. God was the ruler. God is the one that brought them out of Egypt. God is the one that led them by a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. God was the one that gave them manna from heaven. God was the one that took care of them the whole time in the wilderness. God was the one that caused them to come into the promised land and fulfill the promise that he made with Abraham. Okay, God did all this. Now that you're in the promised land, and Moses had told you all, when you get to the promised land in the book of Deuteronomy, don't forget about the Lord. But teach this to your children and your children's children and your children's children. Make sure you don't forget the Lord. Now, after this cycle of the judges, and I told you that judges were deliverers, okay? Every time Israel uh, uh, got into a bad situation and they began to hide from their enemies that were still there in the land, the Lord would grow up a judge, okay? That's where you get uh, Deborah and Barak and Gideon and Samson. They would always come and bring Israel from a state of despair back into a state of delight. But the point that we focus in on is after the period of the judges, Israel wanted to be like all of the nations around them. Once they came into the promised land and seen that every nation, pagan nation around them had their little idol gods, had their own kings to fight for them, had everything that they needed. Okay, so Israel decided like, let's be like everybody else around us. We want a king too. Okay, they have a king, the Perizzites have a king, okay, the Amalekites have a king, the Philistines have a king, we want a king too. So God told Samuel, remember Samuel was one of the first prophets, he told Samuel, go ahead and listen to the people. If that's what they want, God said that I have been your God ever since you left, you've been under my leadership. And now you're here in the promised land and you see what's going on in the promised land and now you don't need me anymore. You want your own king, okay? So God, what? He told uh, Samuel to go out and anoint a king, not because he wanted them to have a king, but because they wanted a king, okay? And some people today, Brother Donnell, they wonder, how did uh, uh, our president get into the White House? Why would God allow that to happen? Why? Because the people wanted him in. In there. Yeah. And just like they wanted yeah. Saul, yeah. God did not stop them from putting Saul in there. God did not stop them from putting our president in there. Okay? And then, matter of fact, guess what? Saul began to mess up, didn't he? Yeah. He began to do the same thing that Moses had warned them against doing right. until he went and tried to conjure up Samuel to get some information from the witch of Endor. And God told, told, told the prophet to go and tell him that he was going to be thrown him and put David on the throne. So David was, I remember, here's a real focus is, when they came into Canaan, after the judges, they were a united kingdom. United kingdom. For 120 years. Okay? You had three kings. Who? Who was their first king? Saul. And? David. And? Saul. And the kingdoms was split. Okay? You would no longer have a united kingdom. But now you're going to have a divided kingdom. Kind of significant and profound because there were two spies came back with good reports, right? Ten with bad reports, right? Now we're going to split and divide the kingdoms. We're going to give two tribes over here and ten tribes over here. The two we're going to call the southern kingdom. The ten we're going to call the northern kingdom. Okay? Uh, I just made that correlation. Question the two that also came back with the good report. Joshua and Caleb. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Joshua and Caleb. They, they were from those tribes. Yeah. Okay, that's, mm -hmm. I, that's the first time I tied that together. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but in any way, I mean, when, when the kingdom was divided, I'm, I'm going to what she asked me earlier. That's that's the point I'm trying to get to. Is is the, is the conclusion of the Old Testament? Okay. Now now now, when the kingdom was split up under the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, all the kings of the north were wicked. Kingdoms of the south. Some were good. A few were good, but most of them, mostly they were basically wicked. Okay? God allowed the northern kingdom to go off into captivity by the Assyrian army. Okay? 722 B.C. Okay? The southern kingdom lasted from 100 to 130 years longer, and he allowed them also to go off into captivity by King, King, King Nebuchadnezzar and Babylon. Okay? And even though Assyria had taken them into captivity, now Babylon is in charge, 
And now God is not going to allow those nations to go unpunished, okay? He punished the Assyrians by the Babylonians. Now he's going to punish the Babylonians by the Medes and the Persians, okay? And they're going to come and take the rest of Israel off into captivity. And he had Jeremiah to prophesy that you're going to be in captivity for 70 years. So get comfortable. I'm not going to get you out. You're going to stay there for 70 years. But at the end of that 70 years, I'm going to decree King Cyrus to allow you to go back and re begin to rebuild Jerusalem again. Because remember, Jerusalem had been completely torn down and destroyed. The walls, the city, the altar, everything in Jerusalem. Okay? So when you look at that particular time, when you look and then all that occurred before you get to the book of Ezra and Nehemiah. But when you get to the book of Ezra and the book of Nehemiah, Israel's 70 year of captivity is up. And now the Lord is calling on Cyrus to allow Israel to go back and begin to rebuild the city. So you can see in the book of Ezra where the governor Zerubbabel, son of Shantil, took maybe 35,000 to go back and start rebuilding the city, even though there were millions there. And after they went back and began to rebuild the city, and you all remember the cupbearer by the name of Nehemiah, okay? Ezra, Zerubbabel took about 50,000 back. Ezra went back and led some back. Zerubbabel was to establish uh, the altar. And when Ezra went back, he was to begin to rebuild the temple. And then Nehemiah, in the end, Nehemiah was called on to go back and rebuild the walls around the city. So when the book of Nehemiah closes, he's building the walls around the city of Jerusalem. Now the point I wanted to get into and the point that I was stressing was the fact that that was the conclusion of the Old Testament. I gave you all some handouts, okay? Now we're going to get into the prophetic books and the prophetic books you have major prophets and you have minor prophets, okay, in the prophetic books. You have four major prophets. Some people say five. When you add lamentations, you have about 11, 12 uh, minor prophets, okay? So when you look at the major and the minor prophets, remember, the prophets were all the same, whether they were major or whether they were minor. Now, you also had at that time what they called a non-writing prophets, okay? Some of the non-writing prophets was not recorded. They did not have a book in the Bible. Uh, one of the main, one of the uh, non-writing, turn to the book of uh, Elijah 16, chapter, verse 12. Elijah 16, 12. Elijah. Kings, baby. Well, who's looking? Is anybody looking for Elijah? Huh? Okay. Okay. Huh? You, you ain't gonna find him. Nathan. Remember Nathan? That told David, you slept with Bathsheba, thou art the man. Is it a book in your name, Nathan? No. None writing prophets. Okay? So you have writing prophets, you have none writing prophets. Whether you have a major prophet or a minor prophet, the prophet spoke what thus saith the Lord. The major prophets, God gave them more in content, okay? When you look at the book of Isaiah, 66 chapters, the book of Jeremiah, probably 50 to 55 chapters, the book of Ezekiel, probably 48 chapters, the book of Daniel, all those books have a lot of content. But when you go to the minor prophets, the book of Amos, not many chapters, the book of Obadiah, not many chapters, the book of Joel, not many chapters. That's why I was stressing whenever people are looking at the phones instead of their Bibles, you will never find the book of Joel. You will never find the book of John. If someone said, turn to that in church, in your Bible, you probably have to wait about 30 minutes if you was trying to wait for everybody to find that particular book before you can start your sermon. Only way that you can start now is because, Brother Marcus, I can pick up my cell phone and put you in Haggai and it'll put it right up. Have no idea where it is. Have no idea what he is, a major prophet, a minor prophet, or what. And a lot of people still have that concept that Malachi concludes the Old Testament. I mean, you look at people, what was the end of the Old Testament? The book of Malachi? No, no, no. That did not end the Old Testament. The Old Testament stopped when they went back and rebuilt the walls around the city of Jerusalem. 
where they would come back again in AD 70 and re-tear it down again. They would attack Jerusalem again. But at that particular time, that was the completion of that. All they were to do was to go back and rebuild huh, the altar, rebuild the walls, and rebuild Jerusalem. And the Old Testament kind of concludes at that point, okay? And then after that, they would not hear from another prophet for some 400 years. That's why you have that 400 year gap between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Not from Malachi all the way up until Matthew. It's from, from the book of Nehemiah. Because when you look at that handout that I gave you all, and it's basically dealing with the prophets and the roles of the prophets. Because remember, these are prophetic books. We're talking the major prophets and the minor prophets, but all of those prophets had the same job. They were to say what thus saith the Lord. They were to either go to Israel, either to the northern kingdom, or either to the southern kingdom. And they were to advise either the king of that uh, kingdom to make sure that you turn from your evil ways. The Lord don't want you going this way. Stop worshiping idol gods. That was the job of the prophet, whether it was a major prophet or whether it was a minor prophet. Every prophet spoke what thus saith the Lord. Amen, look at that. Uh, it says, uh, for thousands of years, Israel, there, uh, uh, there appeared to be men, a few women, who received messages from God and delivered uh, those messages to Israel. These prophets have a profound, profound impact on the national life of Israel, okay? Although they did not appear in unbroken order, they did come on the sense in every era of Israel. Look at the office of the prophet, okay? We're talking about uh, Jeremiah, Isaiah, uh, Ezekiel, Daniel, Amos, Obadiah, Micah, Nahum, Zechariah, uh, Zephaniah, Malachi. We're talking about all of the prophets. This is the role of the office of the prophets, okay? It says the prophet uh, Amos makes clear that prophets were a gift from God, okay? When they saw a prophet coming, they either knew that, man, he got something bad to say or he got something good to say. They feared seeing the prophet. Remember they were looking for Elijah? They said, well, if I see you, you're going to disappear, and they're going to think that I'm lying again. Elijah said, I'm going to stay right here this time. But the prophet will also just disappear. Because sometimes God would move that prophet, but that prophet was God's spokesman, and that prophet had to move at God's command. Not man's command, but God's command. Yeah. Because he was God's spokesman. It says, look at that first paragraph where it says, uh, the divine origin of the prophetic office affirmed by Jeremiah, who also uh, revealed that it began with Moses when the prophets began. Okay, it says that God spoke, look, God spoke directly to men like Abraham before Moses, but the prophetic office with its various functions began with Moses. A primary message in understanding the prophetic office, as in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy declared, Moses declared, that God would raise up prophets, uh, institutions, and that someday a great prophet would arise, and that would be Jesus, what he's talking about right there. Okay? When you look at the role of the prophet, look at, at some of the, the, the different names of the prophets. And some of them called them the prophet, okay? Not, not only the prophets, some of them called them seers. Because they could see. They had hindsight. They had foresight. They had insight. I said they had foresight because Jeremiah could look down the road and see that you're going into captivity for 70 years. He had foresight, didn't he? He knew what was going to happen. He had hindsight. He knew exactly what had happened to Israel and why they were in captivity. And then he had insight. I mean, come on. If you stop doing this or turn from the out of God's then God is going to allow you to be blessed. That, that was the prophet's role. When you look at the prophets and the different names of the prophets, some people called them the man of God. Have you seen the man of God? He, he was the prophet. That's who they were speaking of, the servant of the Lord. All of those are the same. When you look at the role of the prophet, y'all see the role of the prophet? When it says in Israel there were two categories.